What is it that you guys are advocating for or against? We're advocating, well, for adv we were advocating for a number of things today, but uh, the main goal I've been focused on is the abolition of nuclear weapons, trying to get the United States, the other nuclear powers, to ratify the United Nations treaty banning nuclear weapons and trying to. Uh, if not uh, eliminate all nuclear weapons, then at least to reduce them to the barest minimum possible. And why is it that uh, you, you seek to abolish them or reduce them? Nuclear weapons are weapons of mass murder. Their destructive power is so great that they cannot be used in any kind of dis restrained or discriminating way. In war, we typically understand that violence should be directed only at enemy soldiers. If you intentionally kill civilians, or if you kill soldiers and civilians alike without regard for civilian lives, that's considered a war crime. That's considered mass murder and nuclear weapons can't discriminate between soldiers and civilians, at least not given the enormous uh, yields of the larger nuclear weapons. All right. And the way that military and civilian life are so intertwined, ba military bases are close to cities, they're close to civilian areas. So if you use a nuclear weapon much more than a minuscule uh, yield in destructive yeah. power in any situation other than you know, uh, armies in the middle of a desert or something like that, you're going to kill huge numbers of civilians, and that's, that's immoral. And, and, their uses and it's typically are. considered illegal under most circumstances in war. Right. What do you think about the argument that they're used for as a deterrent? Because no nuclear country has been uh, nuked yet, right? Sure, sure. I understand people's concerns about that, and I don't think there's necessarily a, an ideal way of ensuring peace among nations, or if there is, I don't know of it. I think we have to weigh the different options before us. We can pursue this immoral course of maintaining nuclear weapons, which is also highly risky, because no nuclear, no nuclear weapons holding states have gone to war against each other yet, but we've come very close at times, whether it's the United States and the Soviet Union in the Cold War, whether it's the Soviet Union and China in the late 1960s, yeah. India and Pakistan, we've come close. And also there, there's been the risk of accidental nuclear war because of miscommunications, accidents. There's been a few of those. There's, they there's lost, a very... Uh, they lost a nuclear weapon uh, off the coast of uh, Tybee Island in Georgia. Okay. Uh, still can't find it. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Broken arrow incidents where they right. lose a nuclear weapon. Right. There are a lot of dangers in maintaining nuclear weapons. There are dangers in trying to get rid of them. I acknowledge that. But what we have to, in my view, what we have to consider is not, we have to compare our options not to some ideal world in which there were no nuclear weapons, no one knew how to make nuclear weapons, there was no conflict among nations, but among the options available to us right now. And I think that trying to eliminate nuclear weapons or reduce them to a tiny number of very low yield weapons is the most moral and is at, le at least no more dangerous than continuing as we have been with just maintaining these enormous arsenals. In like the pro-life position, right? Like there's like some science there saying pro-life. Right, uh, right. So would, um, then if like uh, we're, we're questioning this organization, their capacity to use them or not use them or maintain them or like mm -hmm. misuse them, mm -hmm. uh, would not then the most moral position then to be maybe abolish this organization called the government? Uh, <laughs> and since we can't trust them with such a dangerous mass murdering weapon, uh -huh. uh, maybe it would behoove us then maybe to not coexist with such an organization in our lives. You mean you're, you're proposing something such as anarchism? Yes. Right? You know, I have a lot of sympathy for anarchism because I'm not a big fan of the government and, and its <laughs> war-making powers. Right. Uh, I admit I am, I am not yet prepared to go to the point of saying we should not have any, have any government at all because I do worry about how we would organize society and particularly how we could maintain the extraordinarily complex uh, economic uh, arrangements that have allowed us to have such a high standard of living in the modern world without some kind of coordinating body such as the government. I'm willing to keep an open mind, though. Right, yeah, I, yeah. I'm willing to hear ideas, though. Right, yeah. I mean, it's not to say, like, these areas that government has monopolized, like Virginia, they monopolize liquor, right? You have ABC uh, sources. It's uh, not okay. like to say, like, uh, without government, no one would know how to coordinate and sell distilled spirits, right? Sure, or sure. Or how to build flat things on the ground, like roads. Uh, and then we've seen, like, in Florida that the sheriffs, the government can't even protect life, liberty, or property. And the four sheriffs that even hit, that hid behind uh, their uh -huh. cars. And then it even engaged the shooter, I right? See. So we see, like, time and time again, the government can't even protect life and liberty property, they even endanger it, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, with their weapons of mass destruction. Sure, sure. So I would posit then maybe the biggest danger to life itself would be the very thing that continues to threaten it cont consistently, with many examples throughout history. 
Well, no, there's no shortage of examples throughout history of, of governments killing people. Right. There's also many examples of private individuals killing people. I, I think of a situation such as, say, Somalia today or Libya, where there's no, effectively no functioning government. They have a government now in Somalia. Well, but doesn't have control of most of the country. Right, yeah. I mean, I would say, like, things, when, when the Somali government fell apart through civil war uh -huh. because of government, uh, things, people's actually lives kind of improved. Uh, their, their money and their uh, like infant mortality rates, all this stuff were going down, and other areas that we will see as good improvements went up until, like, government came back, their security forces came in, and then you have, like, a lot of rape accusations coming in from like, government agencies. Um, there was a remark I think I heard, I'm not sure if it was mm -hmm. for someone saying, like, that this is also. Uh, a view of AR-15s being weapons of mass destruction? Uh, yes, there. I think there are many people within this coalition that uh, favor uh, stricter gun control re regulations and as some people mentioned are going to have a presence at the March for Our Lives right. in, uh, in a couple weeks and, uh, and at the next vigil uh, we're going to invite people uh, who are in favor of uh, gun control regulations who are involved in that campaign to participate. What is, what is your opinion on the, the issue yourself? My personal opinion? Yeah. On, on what exactly? Uh, do, do you view maybe ban rifles from uh, civilian use? For, from, from anyone who's not the government having them? <laughs> uh, speak, speak, well first of all, yeah. just to give my own personal opinion yeah. as opposed to the view of speaking as the head of an organization. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm agnostic on that question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not prepared to say there should be no private gun ownership. Uh, I'm not such an absolute, uh, elitist, absolutist on nonviolence. I don't think people don't have the right to defend themselves. Right. I do believe we need to, I do adhere to the belief, which is the fundamental principle behind arms control, that uh, fewer weapons means violence is less likely. The less, the fewer weapons there are in the world, the less likely violence is. That's why we have arms control agreements to reduce nuclear weapons or airplanes or tanks or submarines. I think the same principle, broadly speaking, applies to uh, handguns or rifles in private hands. But I must admit, I'm not. It's not an issue that I know a great deal about. It's not my primary concern right. is uh, is war and violence made by by governments at the national right. level rather than private That violence. seems to be the most, uh, like when we look at individual level versus the government, the government continues to amass this body count versus mm -hmm. at the individual level. No, it's definitely a problem. It's, it's right. a problem. I, I, I do wish that people could be as concerned with the number of people killed in, say, drone strikes as yeah, they are with right. people killed in mass shootings. Right. Although people are right to be concerned about both. I wouldn't want to give the, uh, the opposite impression. And you've been doing this even during Obama's term, right? And rain advocating uh, against uh, drone yeah, bombs? I mean, yeah. Well, the, the anti-drone protest, yes, began under cool. uh, Obama in 2012. Good, and, great. Uh, and I've, uh, I'm, I'm, 2012 is roughly when I began my own uh, <laughs> career, so to speak, as an activist. Sure. And I, certainly I've been, been, <laughs> I've been absolutely disgusted by the Obama administration's record when it comes to war and peace. So you right. can quote me on that. Oh, that's great, yeah. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people saying, like, where's, where's the anti-war crowd, right? No, it's, it's terrible. It's yeah. terrible. And what I think we have to realize is, it's funny, it's something, uh, a fellow activist put this, I thought, very aptly when she commented that, and of course we combine opposition to war with opposition to abortion, as you heard people refer to, and she said that during George W. Bush's presidency, the anti-war crowd was very active, it was very energetic, uh, and the pro-life activists were fairly passive and complacent because they assumed, oh, we have a president now who's on our side, so we don't have to get into the streets, rally, agitate, right. or make an effort. And then when Obama became president, the pro-life crowd became very galvanized because they felt we had to push back against this guy. And the anti-war crowd, they became complacent and passive and figured we don't have to do anything. And I do think the lesson we all need to learn is that politicians aren't going to do a thing for us right. unless <laughs> we, the people, make them. So we've got to be active and, out and galvanized all the time, whoever's in the White House. Well, I like the first part, that politicians are not going to listen to us anyway. Yeah. So they have their own agenda, right. their own sure. constituents. Sure. Um, and I would say like, there's a lot of people who view like Trump being uh, this uh, I don't know, demagogue uh, mm -hmm. and, and sure. this like, capacity. Continue some, some drone strikes, right, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, Within like the last people, like this application for gun rights and people advocating take it away like mm -hmm. AR-15s, would that not be wise then that the only people who have AR-15s would be the government? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah. I will say, as I said, I don't, I personally do not know enough about gun violence, gun regulation issues to say for sure. Yeah. I do think I am ambivalent about the argument made by many gun control advocates that 
essentially goes something like, the government is too powerful, it doesn't make a difference whether you own guns or not as far as resisting them. Right. And my view is, well, I don't find that a particularly persuasive argument. Because, Just history of... Well, well, but also, here's the thing, I, I don't believe that, I do not necessarily believe that what we did here today came out and protested in public. You could argue, well, compared to the immense power of the government to dominate what people see, what people hear, what people think, you know, what we did here is to drop in the bucket, or what I write online or in a newspaper, that's to drop in a bucket. So is the fact that my freedom of speech is seemingly so inconsequential, should that mean I'm okay with people trying to reduce that or limit it, to say you can't assemble in public, mm -hmm. you can't print things that the government doesn't like? I mean, the notion that the tremendous power of the government should justify taking away even more power that the citizens have relative to the government, that does strike me as a questionable argument. Yeah. Uh, but that's not to say I wouldn't support uh, greater gun regulation than we currently have. I would need to study the issue more. Well, I, I, that's a good, uh, yeah, I, I will honestly say the same thing, certain things okay. I'm not aware sure. of myself. Sure. So cool. That's great. That's, uh, great. really appreciate your response and oh, sure. your opinion of the matter. Sure. Oh, continue the, uh, the good work and be anti-nuclear weapons, anti-drone strikes. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anti-war. Thank you. <laughs>